not Spooky Sunday, first and foremost, but today we will be playing the game Beacon Pines. Um, I only know it's like a storybook game, and when I googled it to kind of see what genre it said, it's like a cute, creepy storybook game. Um, it, it's very light. It's very lighthearted and cutesy fun, though. It's it, I don't think it's like spooky scary, so I thought it'd be a fun game to start. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start Beacon Pines. So, um, let's jump in. Uh, my camera is up at the top because I'm pretty sure from the pictures I saw on the Steam page, the uh, underneath me, the character models like show up and they're like cute, expressive drawings and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that that was there. So let me start the game. I'm gonna be sure. I'm not on the... <laughs> there we go. Dear reader. Right there. Yeah, okay. Let me turn it up a little bit more here then. Okay, that should be fine. Allow me to introduce you to Ooh. my book. I like her voice. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. She's got a very nice voice. Let me... Sorry. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. Ooh. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. Ooh. It is in that way that my book is special. Oh, is it like a branching it path? It is in that way that you are special. It's... Without you, there is no story. Ooh. Chapter one. Look at that, that's so pretty. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Her voice is so relaxing. Back from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. Oh, there he is! His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, oh. dear reader, he's here for a reason. Whoa, oh, whoa. Oh, 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 he's so cute. Wee! Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh, okay, actually, I can have the camera down there, it looks like. Should be fine. I'll put myself right here. Hey, Dad. Sorry. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. Well, this is sad as hell already. I was six years old when you died. Oh, God. And it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. Oh. 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 Feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this was, tree was your favorite spot in the world. Oh. Oh, he's crying! No! Me too. Oh! Oh, hey, Luca! I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. Oh. He possessed many I like Rolo. But subtlety was not one of them. Well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered. And after I checked the pond, and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. <laughs> I like Rolo. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's Aww. eyes, and the flowers on the grave. Oh, right. Yeah. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. What? She's not gone. She's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. Oh my god, this poor kid. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Oh, I love him. Jump, jump with me, Rolo. Jump with me. 
I'm still jumping. Look at this. <gasps> I got an achievement. That was the cutest little sneeze. Do it again. Wait, why am I looking at oh C? Oh, I don't have a C. Wonderful. Oh, triangle. About you from the moment you opened my book. Okay. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal oh. itself soon enough. Oh. Okay. Uh, how do? I... Oh, it's O. Okay. Again. Do. Do. So cute. Okay, let's go. Ooh. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Lolo looked to the side suspiciously. Okay. Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh! Not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. I am so much. I love Rolo. Just meet me at the sign once you're done. See yourself. I won't be long. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a big Rolo guy right now. Uh, tell Graham before heading out with Rolo. Uh... Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I can see them both. So, um, yeah, it takes me a while to warm up to people too. I get it, Rolo. Reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? Yes. There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. Oh. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some hmm. of them can be found in this very house. Oh. Hint. Just some dusty knickknacks. Since me. Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Tuh. Cute. Can I run? No. I can just do that cute little jump. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Obligation. Oh! Ah! Look at me! Wow. Ooh! Ponder. Tickle Ponder. <laughs> that was so cute. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Aww. Can I go upstairs? Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. Aww. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Hmm, what about here? Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief. What? She said. Hide. Hmm. Oh. Oh, we share a room. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Ah! It was the first day of summer. A chill still hung in the air. Chill. <laughs> Gran's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's like really nice and tidy over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is such a cute little game. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Aww. Anything else? No? So where's like our bathroom? Got a bathroom in this house? Back here? Do they just not have a bathroom? Am I am I missing something? The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Okay. God, I love her voice. Keep talking. Scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Nice. Junk. Okay, turn that back off. <laughs> An array of prepared meals 
is crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Cut that. I'm trying to be respectful. Okay. Oh, oh. My. this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I have been waiting for all these years. Ooh. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Yes. Excuse me. I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. Oh, it is like a butterfly there effect, are isn't it? in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Oh. Step forth, dear reader. Can I look over here? Is there anything? A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Young Luca would spend hours in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. Aww. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. <laughs> I wonder when she went missing or how she went missing. Is that the mystery? Is that what we're doing? We're a trying to solve? Guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Nothing else? Alright, hi, are you Gran? Hey Gran, I'm gonna go hang with Rollo for the day. See you later. Oh. Oh. Hold up now. Where are you and Rollo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Oh, whoa, that scared me. Uh, we were just gonna go... Oh. Uh. Oh, I guess chill? We're gonna go chill for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. Thus lies are built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. We'll make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Okay. Done. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. I did it. That is the power of charms. A single word okay. can change everything. So if I hadn't collected all of those, I wouldn't have been I able to do all that. To introduce you to the chronicle. Ooh. What is that going to be? Triangle. Triangle. The Chronicle is a record Ooh. of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and ah. invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for That's us, cool. this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. Okay. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Okay. So, in oh, okay, yeah. So instead of chill, I could say... We're gonna ponder for the day. Ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? Luca's chance to sell his alibi. <laughs> um, you know, big stuff, small stuff, medium, mostly medium pondering. <laughs> well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with the preponderance of pondering. Uh huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. That's cute. All right, I want it to be, wait. Oh, so that's how I can go back to the game. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I want to say ch uh, hide. We were just gonna go hide for the day. That one sounded a little sus. Uh, hide. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide <laughs> something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I guess there are a little bet some other kids that we can beat them in hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. We'll make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. Well, well. I mean, yeah, that actually worked out pretty well. Alright, bye, Granny. We'll keep... So I could change it to... That's and it, that's cool that it shows a grand jury. That's really cute. The drawing is really cute with this little wee. His little, his little, his little, his little, his little wee. <laughs> that's cute. Uh, that's cool. All right, so we'll leave it on hide, I guess. Uh, anything else that I can look at? One more time now that I've talked to Gran. Oh, what happens? If, oh, she just shoes me away. Okay, we go. Oh, and Luca. You and Rolo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. <laughs> Bye. Get into trouble with Rolo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! I'm on a mission! 
All right. Ooh, back out front. Is there anything that I can look at out here? <laughs> Look at him, he's so cool! Ah, I love the little zoom in it did. Look at him, he's so cute. Alright. Oh, oh! Come on, come on! Woo! -hoo! Dang it, Rolo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. I mean, the sign's not very taken care of, so I don't know what you mean by grand. What's this way? The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Uh. Oh. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover a secret path. <laughs> Chapter 2. Ooh. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Huh. All right. Uh... Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO oh, of wow. the <laughs> Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town <laughs> over the past few years after the failing of Valentine Fertilizer. Oop. Sorry, hang on. The town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. <clears throat> Excited for the big festival? We're gonna give him like a very prim and proper voice because that's how he's dressed. Oh, um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo, Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry Luca, I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. How now? The left side's all a little low. <laughs> Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk right now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I... It's Mayor Valent... <sighs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. <laughs> ah, I like him. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. All right, what can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. <laughs> well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. Young Mr. Van Horn, as he kind of said it. Oh, can I do it again? <laughs> I love these leaning posts. Look at that zoom in again. He's chill. He's cool. He knows who he is. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversations. Yeah, that's funny. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sinclair. Bah. Don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? <coughs> oh, that bat did something weird to my throat. <coughs> Ow. Bah. I don't know what that did to my throat. How's the napping today? Crummy as always. Used to have a perfectly nice view from here. Till perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? It's if, if, if it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. <sighs> Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. Sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound ya. Yep. Yeah, but my mom said... Yeah, but, yeah, but, if I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry, it's my first week at Perennial Harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful, it won't happen again. 
we're going to use on if we're going to be on a first name basis then you can call me pete oh nice to meet you pete sorry what are you writing oh just documenting gosh it's exciting to be part of something so darn special you know it's not just about me fountain and phone booths we're gonna change the world and it all starts here in beacon pines isn't that amazing uh-huh anyways i'd better get oh that reminds me we'd love to hear your thoughts my thoughts you bet if we're gonna change this town we need to get every detail right that sounds intense <laughs> changing the world is intense so what do you say could you answer a few questions well i guess if it's quick wonderful open to answering a few quick questions one down see it it's not that hard, is it? Okay, we're going already. Question two. What is something you'd love about Beacon Pines? Never really thought about it before. Perfect. It's the only place I've lived. See? That wasn't so painful. Was it? I guess not. Huzzah! Our first three questions, questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. Oh my god. Whoa, what a cool building. Oh right, well, Rolo's waiting up in the treehouse. All right, I'm just gonna go there then. Can I look at the garbage? No. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any charms. Okay. Oh! Hi! You're adorable. Hey, Jetson! Is Lion playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, it's never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken to standing recently. Keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Aww. Aww. Baby Luca. Sorry, Batman's walking all around. He's rubbing on the mic. Perfect bait. Yeah, man, I can't, I can't see. Please move. Come on. Uh, tickle junk. What? Tickle. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Oh. After skimming the surface. Does that count? No. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Give it a good cast now. <laughs> oh, I have to reel it in a bit faster. My catch will lose interest. <laughs> All right, so we'll do junk. A shoestring to the hook. <laughs> what fish could resist a nice shoestring? Yeah, I I get that. All right, talk. Give give a good cast. Wait, can I do anything over here? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I am doing... Th I didn't realize I'm pulling it. <gasps> ah! Oh my god, that scared me. Oh, I got a boot. Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Some things, Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, whatever it is, wherever it is, I hope that the other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. I'll do tickle now. Good for skin. Okay. Try it again now. It's gonna come out. Okay. A duck! A rubber duck! Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. <laughs> Cried for days. I told you I'd turn up. <laughs> That's cute. 
Can I look at them? I gotta click something else. Uh, I think I missed one then, technically. Luca tied a what? fish. Is that gonna do anything else or no? I feel like there's supposed to be a third thing that I need. Does that mean I already missed one, man? The other boot. Oh nope, that's just the same boot. Well, now what? Oh, looks like we could use something. What do you say we head out and find some more? Uh, new bait. Okay. Oh, I can leap. Oh, oh, that's it. That was it? Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want that. God damn it. Get rid of it. Just let it go away. There we go. Okay. I probably could have just walked away. Maybe I can come back to it? Mission control. Authorized personnel only. I wonder if I... Did I... Is it something that will come up in the future? I don't really know. Uh, I guess I'll go on. Oh, look at that! Uh. <laughs> the water is so cute. Fish, 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 fish. They oh. always had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. Uh, keep out. Oh, okay, I just go straight up. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. <coughs> I love it. He always thinks it's aliens. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh. What is that? Oh. I looked up at the satellite dish. Sa satellite dish. Rolo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. Very nice. Oh, pull. Could I use that? While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, <laughs> it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. That's cool. It's actually very intuitive. Uh, oh. Lucas winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Mm, sorry, hang on, give me one sec. Oh! Ah! That's the stuff. All right. He's so cute. I love Luca. Anything else? Oh. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. Oh. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Aww, Rolo's so cute. What a good friend. Okay. <clears throat> okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. Kinda, sorry. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. Oh, he's crying again. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And then you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Oh, what a good friend. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I wanted to spend the first day of summer. 
Let's go! <laughs> <coughs> he is adorable. Okay, so I wonder if pull can be used on this now. Yeah! Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Oh, that makes Fixing sense. With the law of attraction. Yeah. Someone's making it quiver a lot. Oh, it's a key. Where do you think the <clears throat> Where do you think the lock goes for this key? Now, why would we want to find that? Because then we would know the secret. Eh, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. <laughs> oh, so I can just, I just need to keep on coming. Okay, so that's three. Oh, God. Leave. All right, that's three out of however many. Oh, okay, so now I can go over here. Hi! I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on. I'll catch up. Okay, bye! Ooh, town hall. Okay, look at things. The beacon beacon. Oh. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record. The beacon beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news on the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Oh, change. Okay. How about you? Hey, Miss Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any plans? Big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Okay. How about you? Cash could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. Oh. The two wandered down the wooded path. Unaware of the danger ahead. Oh! Oh, this is getting good! Uh-oh. That's foreshadowing, isn't it? Can I, like, go up into the coffee? Ooh, I can! That's cool! Um, Piper? Oh, hey, Luca. What's up? You know it's summer break, right? Of course! And it's, like, the morning. Correct! And you're studying? Like they say, the early bird... Gets a proper education required for a successful and career fulfilling career in later in life. Mm hmm. <laughs> hey, Zariel. Hiya, Luca. Could you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um. Let me. Zariel would like you. Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow. You're really setting the kid up for success. I can't go inside. That's cute, though. Cute little interact. I love the early bird. Gets a fulfilling education. <laughs> can I go in the beacon beacon? No. Can I go in the town hall? I'm assuming I gotta go down or to the right, but... Ooh, what's that fix? Oh. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. Oh. This is an important turning point. Oh. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. Oh. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Oh. Have no fear. We can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Oh. Well, now I'm just rambling. Okay, okay. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? Oh, oh. Luca, wait up! I almost forgot to tell you! Roxy might be lurking around here! This is one of her favorite places to stand around being useless! Rolo! So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo! 
<laughs> He's doing the little... Why are, you turning, why are you doing that turning thing with your body? Wait, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? <laughs> well... Uh, don't mind me. Just over here lurking. Uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. <laughs> we all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank's atomic shrink array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Oh. Molo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Oh, God. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. A little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Just be a little chill. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. Sun's shining. We just want to take it easy. He's leaning, <laughs> He's leaning up against the wall. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. Full report! Oh, so now I have to go alone. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Sharper Valentine Valentine I don't know I keep on changing it every time Founder of Beaker Pines Beacon Never underestimate what a great man can do Given time Sharper Valentine A bit much if you ask me <laughs> Indulgent Oh Is that one that I could use? No it's only Oh so I can see Okay so it's only chill that I have still I wonder if it'll update it. We'll have to test that. Is it down this way? Oh, oh, cute! Look at this! Hey, Bert! Hi, Luca. I'm doing some fact-checking for the town history exhibit. Look, kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know, when the town was founded, there were only seven citizens, and they all worked for a mining company. And there was only one dirt road leading to town. And there still is only one road leading to town. Oh, right. <laughs> so cute. Can I look at that? No. Cotton candy! Hey, Griffin! How's the ice cream? Oh, ice cream. Not great. It's still pretty cold out. I'm in the business of selling cold. I'm sure things will warm up soon. Mr. Tolliver's not get at his grocery stand? He's prepping for the festival, I guess. Gotcha. Big watermelon. <laughs> ah, smack! <laughs> oh, I didn't think that was gonna actually be something. Wait. All right, sorry, I'm done. <sighs> you good, bro? Can I bump the ladder? Wee, I'll help you. All right, I'm gonna go. Wee, let's go to the place. I'm assuming it's this way then. Wait, can I use smack? No. Just kidding. <laughs> oh. Hey, Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit-chat. 
Uh, Max Sullivan? 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 Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the fall harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Oh. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. Oh, look at him. What a big guy. This... Oh, Luca, my boy. Hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise huh? Gran regretted. <laughs> will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Oh, God. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. <laughs> I gotta go. Sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh, dear. I'm glad I didn't talk to you first. Yeah, you're creep. You creep. Roof was brand new. Part of perennial harvests beacon pines reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. <laughs> I was gonna say really the, the phone booth. Oh, hi. Hey Luca. Hey Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh sure, bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into Weep Wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. Uh, so I'm assuming that's where I have to go then. Oh, whoa. This place is huge. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their oh, Valentine's. The rest of town. Wow. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Hmm. Keep going. Oh, well, like, why, why, why am I here? What am I doing? I need to not be here. I need to go somewhere else, but I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. All right, I think I'm good. I can go. I have thoroughly investigated. Still don't have the right charm, right? Okay. Just making sure. Goodbye. I'm gonna go not step on bugs. The path oh. led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often Run in? What Rolo would do. Probably. So that he could rule out that option. Yeah. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Exactly. <laughs> uh... Oh! As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bolts remained. I threw it like in the way middle. I don't know what you mean by. That's two. One more to go. Yeah. Done. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. I can get in. Moment of truth. Yeah. The kid in town knew the old Valentine fertilizer building. What the fuck is that? Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. There's something coming out of the window. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. What's all that green stuff coming out? Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Uh, oh, wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. What is this? Is it a cord? The water looked almost diseased. Oh. It glowed slowly and uh. Oh my god, what the what the heck? It's like sludgy, maybe? What's that green stuff? Okay, I guess. emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Oh. Yeah, oh, so it is just draining it into there. Okay. okay. Uh, Investigate the Valentine warehouse alone. We did it. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of no. the door. Oh, no. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. 
A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. <gasps> no, 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 no. Luca, run, run, Luca. Luca, Luca, Luca. Hello? <gasps> Luca! Oh! What the fuck? Shit. Shit! I got a shit charm! <gasps> the steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. Oh no! He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave <gasps> in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab, into the green light. Oh my god! This is a story about... This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a what dangerous the fuck? End. The end? What? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that are story- What? Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. What? Are you serious, lady? Oh my god, hang on one sec. I'm just trying to get things... Okay. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. I thought I, it already... It already did that. Um, now, let's try something different. Because it had the check mark. That's why I wanted to do... See, it has the check. It had the check marks for those ones. Okay, so oh, I can do shit now. He said shit when he saw me. <laughs> oh, oh. So in the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. <laughs> in the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Oh! Make a break for it! I just kicked her! <laughs> what have you done? Ah! <laughs> Did that little shit just kick me? <laughs> Run all you want, you little twerps! You gotta come home eventually! Holy shit. That was funny. Sorry! Oh my god. Oh, I can talk to him now. Sorry about that. Really can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm... Getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Oh, oh no! Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house? Yeah. And how's that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how she wants to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who's rarely around. In lieu of one who tries coming to compensate by smothering you with affection. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they can solve. What the? What have you been through, Solomon? You good? Oh, oh, whoa. Oh, that's gotta be his dad or something, I bet. Solomon! Trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. Okay, Mom. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, heiress. I was just taking a stroll through town. Or like older sibling. Strolls are for commoners. You're a Valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. 
Of course. So was he adopted? Hmm. Okay. I'm not talking to you. Oh no, god damn it. Thank you, yep. <sighs> Boy's got too much of his father in him. Oh, cool, I can just go, it just takes me straight there. I win! Little help. I am the champion! <laughs> we were racing. Did that road get longer? Like anything around here ever change, like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get in around that electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. I fucking knew it. Why did you do that? Pa always says you can figure out what your plan was when you're done. I, I said he was gonna run into it. I said he would run into it. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. Alright, I already know. Don't worry. Oh, from a safe distance, he said. Whoa, you're a genius! I think that did it! Luca, you never fail to impress. <laughs> As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out! Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. <laughs> this is bizarre. This is awesome! Oh. Rumble. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did! <laughs> Check out this puddle! That's not normal. And this hose! Oh, uh-oh. Aw, oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder! No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. What did all of this? My nose is itching, I think there's- I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in! Rolo. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. <laughs> Yay! Come on, lady, look! So, what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Well, a good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Oh, walkies? Are those walkie talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ooh, they look disgusting. Ground Command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic, Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How, um, how are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. Uh-oh, he's coming, he's coming again. What was that? Someone's coming, give me your hand. I'm trying, my hands are covered in squish. Scoot over, I'm coming in. Oh. Oh, there he is. Oh? Did we hide? Oh. Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back. Get down. Oh, no, he's got a body. Oh my god, he's got a body. Oh god, 
Tell me that's not what I think it is. Well, good to know what, the run of, what separates run of the mill detectives from ace detectives. A ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Oh no, Rolo. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. Oh god, what's it say? Bill held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott. Deep engineering. Oh god, it's his body. It's a name tag. Who would throw... Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? Good question, Rolo. I think it's just one name tag and a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Oh, it's not. Watch it, Nafi. I'm... I am not holding... I knew it, yep. I am not holding your hand. Oh, God. What's that? It's holding it. Lucas' hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? <laughs> oh, my God. Ah! Ah! Oh, my God. That scared me. Oh, it's twitching. I'm beginning to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. Or after I go, count to 100. That is a lot of time. I would not count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. And actually, either way, haul ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. We sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, God. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps. As oh, he, he actually ran. ran. Oh, God. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. 35, 36, 37. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Yeah. Luca carefully lifted Holy the shit. lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Go. Go, Luca, go. Oh, run, Luca, run. <sighs> running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Deacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Wow. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room, and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Wow. Chapter oh. three. Oh, oh. I'm home. Finding a friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I also want to point out, it's really cool that the pages are also advancing as the story goes on. Like, I'm not still at page, like, five. Like, it's progressing, like, there's, di like, it's writing down the dialogue that's happening and everything, and it's making the pages fill up. That's really cool. So. I'm just pointing that out. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rollo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Hello. Calm down. Oh no, did did Rolo go missing? No, of course it was the right thing to do. Oh, what? Start gathering folks, I'll be right there. Uh-oh, wait. Did Rolo not make it back? Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Oh no, Rolo didn't make it back! Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Graham's brow furrowed. Uh-oh. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. So 
Damn, that was strange. What about... Is there anything back here that I can look at? Oh, wait! What about, um... Where'd I put the walkie-talkie? Do I, like, have it on my person? Oops, not that one. Wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. Oh, I, I don't have, like, an inventory. Wow, look at all those charms I have. Would it be in my bedroom? An eerie electronic oh. <gasps> ah, I knew it! I knew it! Hello? Is anyone there? It's S. Hello? What is that? What is it saying? Hang on, I need- I'm gonna look up- I- I wanna see, hang on. Long dot dot. D? D-A, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure this out, what it's... D-A-N, is it danger? Is he trying to write danger? He fucking wrote, he's telling me danger. Oh my god, he's, he's saying danger. It said danger in Morse code. No, Rolo! <laughs> what the fuck? Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. Something just knocked. He wasn't sure what to think. Stop! Why is someone knocking? I'm scared. Oh. Oh god, okay. Hey, Roxy. This is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday. Is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed. Yeah, I fucking stomach. knew it. I knew it. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around. In Weepwood, and then it was late, and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Oh god. That- oh no. Rolo. Where are you? Check the library. Okay, Gran, sorry, I am gonna leave. I'm out of here. Friend is more important. What is this way? Is this the way that I go? Oh, that's where the grave is. Okay. Um... Oh, that's the way out of Beacon. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. They must have been talking to clipboards. I'm setting up a lot of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. <laughs> Still cool. Still cool. Not talking to him. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she'll be here, then she'll be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing and waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around doing nothing and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Ugh, my parents won't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weepwood. 
Our shift doesn't end for another couple hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right. Fitz and I will check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up those posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. Oh no, Rollo! Where's the library? Oh, ah, oh, you're cute. Hey, Yilson. History Museum. It's laughable, really. Did you have to see Rollo here? No, just the shadow of a family clinging onto the town, clinging onto the past. Okay. Sorry. Feel free to check for yourself, but don't expect to have your mind blown. Oh, um. Oh, like I can go in there. Oh. Sharper Valentine, celebration of excellence. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. <laughs> what you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. Wow. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here, in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's fertilizer company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck. A scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Riverbend Fund. <laughs> All right, I see what he means. That was unhelpful. All right. How do I? Oh, here. I don't want to talk yet. I want to. Make sure I look around. New additions. What is it, G? Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Oh my god. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Uh, succulent. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Oof. Huh. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rolo come by? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early when day on days when the new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Oh. Roger that, Space Cadet. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Ah! Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. Mycological phosphorescence. Ugh. More like my complete loss of interest. <laughs> that was good. That was good. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin-offs. <laughs> Nerd, I got an achievement. Volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. 
If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Oh. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, hey, Luca. You snuck up on me. Good book. Don't know. Just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that there are two queen hive queens in a hive? They'll fight to the death for supremacy? Fight! <laughs> fight! That's, an, an, that's interesting, but... You haven't seen Rolo recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him here, you'll be the first to know. All right. I'm out. Oh, hi. Were you here? What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh, hey, Mr. N oh, yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You're new here? Yep, not by choice. Sex family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So, I should probably get going. Move on. Hey, wait up! What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo's my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. Aww. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. I have a friend! That's so cute. Oh my god, she follows me! Ah! I love you, Beck. You're so cute. Okay, uh, should I go back? Oh wait, do I have more stuff now for the... Oop, not this way. For the fishing? Oh, that's not where it was. Oh. Hey, Luca, looks like a path goes this way. Hang on, one sec. Oh, I can't go back. I wanted to do more fishing stuff. Oh, shit. Jump. 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 Anything to look at? This music. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. I can't even walk in it. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does the science suggest? Poke it with a stick! <laughs> a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers <gasps> Whoa. dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. Oh, kind of weird ass fertilizer they make it. What the cool? As grown, the flowers begin to shrivel. Oh, it's like super advanced growth. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So science tells us that this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Oh, oh. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yep. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Aw, oh, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've been introduced properly. Iggy's the name. This is my compa compatriot, Tish. Yup. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, seems pretty alright. 
Iggy, why do you have to be so... You. Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Wow, what a asshole child. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My family. Heh. <laughs> Looks like look has grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First, first his pops croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Oh. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Mm -hmm. Beck took a deep breath and thought. What? Uh. Time to bust out the. S I like time to bust out the strange more. I don't think we should walk up and start tickling him. We're gonna time to bust out the strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. All right, Luca. Looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? You some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense. Wackadoos travel in packs, eh, dad? At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Ooh. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into a stunt. Oh, Luca! Ah! Ooh, pushed him in. Were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk! My clothes are ruined. I'm gonna. Iggy's voice began to slur as uh -oh. he struggled to get up. He's gonna like age super fast. A struggle. I don't feel so good. Oh! Elf! I'm sorry, I just... Oh, shit! Yup! Uh... Maybe I should have tickled. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's this? Oh, whoa, wait, what? Wait, I can struggle here now. What? Should I do that? I thought I would be able to struggle here and not tickle. Maybe I, I kind of want to try. I'm going to try. Okay, let's do both. We'll do the struggle and the tickle then. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming. Oh, nearby. it's finished. It's continuing. Oh, shit. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object. Maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Oh my god. Let. Me. Go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone <gasps> hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the Oh my god! Home. Wait! So I didn't die. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. What? What? The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. What? Uh, okay, I already saw that. Rolo, oh, Rolo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. Uh, I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two badges to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the bag and wag. Another from Miss Fr Fratelli at the diner. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much, as he seems to have taken a part particular interest in my jam. Some extras in a basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the top ones on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day is still young. What? What? Oh, now it's got question marks. Oh, what? 
I guess I should just keep on doing what? Which one should I do? What? That's so cool. All right, I'll just finish this. It kind of looks like it ends here. This isn't the story that is being told. Who is she calling? Hello, it's Juniper Hartfield, Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. Simpler matter is we both have that same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. What? Bro, what? Hey, dude. Okay, sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what'd you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rolo, I gotta deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. We shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is you speak of. <sighs> Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. Interesting. This is so interesting. Wow. I think I'm going to do this side first with the strange. Because I, I want to keep it. Oh, I don't know what I just did there, but I did something. Okay, there. I think I accidentally, I actually made it skip faster. Okay, so now that was intense. Iggy's going to be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. The warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? So this is back to the timeline where Rolo was kidnapped. Uh, I, I went back to this one. We have to find Rolo. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, my nose. Okay. Oh, oh. Valentine. Oh, not, not, val maybe Valentine? I don't know. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you doing in, up in to, what in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? I'm just helping look for Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. Just got a little turned around in the woods. It can be really disorienting, you know. I'm starting to get that impression. Rolo's at his house now, getting some well-deserved rest. Wow, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. We can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. Should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nelly about work anyway. Beck glanced toward Luca. Guess all's well that ends well. We'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Interesting. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca. Which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. Yup. <laughs> if he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter four. Oh, okay. Our harvest awaits. I don't like that. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, steeling himself for Gran's wrath. Gran? I'm home. Everything's fine. <coughs> Gran? <coughs> Ow, my throat. <clears throat> Gran? No, I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I was just helping look for Rolo. Weird. Gran? 
Roxy came over. She was worried about him. Figured you wouldn't mind if I helped look for him. Turns out Rolo's safe and sound. Luca was alone. The fuck? Where the is she? Was empty. So Grand's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do now but sleep, I guess. <laughs> Plop. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes what? and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Huh. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. What? Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. What the fuck? Dad, look out! Uh. His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Oh. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, Aww. but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground. No! Oh my God! That crowded around his Jesus head. Christ! Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. What? kind of fucking dream is that? Oh no. Not this again. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Rollo, it's danger again. Oh. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Luca. Rolo, is that you? Luca. There? Rolo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank God. Listen. I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? His voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. Listen to me. Someone grabbed me yesterday. The man in the hazmat suit? It was... Took me to some sort of... I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. I seem more interested in for now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Kerr? No. Trust. He's. Hold on, someone's coming. Rolo? Rolo, where are you? What the fuck? His pounding heartbeat marking. Oh my god. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. His voice began to fade. Shh, losing signal. Not much time. Shh, mission control. Shh. You need to shh, the treehouse. The treehouse. The signal died for good. Maybe something about the dish? Satellite dish? What was he trying to say about the treehouse? What's at the treehouse? The antenna. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't see these antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. That's what I thought too. We got the same mind. Same mind. 
<clears throat> Luca heard a group oh. of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Ooh. Oh, it's Gran. Oh. So, we all understand our roles. You can count on me. Still think we need more time. This wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly by while the danger persists. Refuse. Harem, just keep your wits about you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. All right, you can count on me. I just wish we could have made that deal with Harris Valentine. Her resources would have come in handy. As I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans change. How's Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all... I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Sparkplug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined look. So the dude lied that my grandma was worried sick looking about me. She didn't even know I was gone. So how did he know that she told me to stay home and to not be out and about? Unless that was just like a guess. But, hmm, that's interesting. Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Uh-oh, Grant's gonna get home now. Okay, good. Yeah, just keep walking. Gran, why are you meeting with Mr. Fratelli Mrs. Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver late at night? <gasps> Fuck! Hey, Luca. Yeah! Dawn, you scared me. How long have you been there? Uh, just a few minutes. The other day, I saw Mr. Tolliver and your grand enter the diner together. When I shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool of any investigative reporter. Time. When they left, I tailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem to organize and determined. They mentioned the festival. Yeah, I heard that too. Has your grandma been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Hiram Tolliver, it seems. He's either furious or terrified. Or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of a scoop of a lifetime. <laughs> I will. Aren't you coming out? Nah, I'm gonna stake out here for a bit longer. See ya, Luca. She might... Okay, bye! She might have more info than, uh... When it's all over. Can I... Oh, I have to go up here, actually. Actually, can I talk to them? What are they doing there? I did it. Change the sign. Splendid. Did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough to just rearrange the letters. Odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd is good. Shared a mischievous grin. I can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. It should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scarce for now. Did they do something to the History Museum sign? Can I go see? I better hurry up to the treehouse. Okay. Just kidding, going up to the treehouse instead. Hydrate. Thank you. Ah, yes, thank you very much. Very appreciated. Oh! I want to see if there's any other bait that I can use. Oh, wow, I got a lot of bait. Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. There. Jesus, that scares me every time. Bracelet? Should I give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. Luca wrapped some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. Let's go! Literally everything but a fish I've caught. What kind of bait is this? Oh, my back. Okay. Uh, paper? Crumpled up paper? A bunch of big words written on it. 
Let's see that. We regret to inform you that your application for property rights with respect to the Beacon Pine CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. Who's that for? Applicant, Valentine and State. Good. Good. Huh. Luca placed a finger on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Go! There we go. Ooh! Message in a bottle. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard liquor for a hard man. Best to leave that be. Takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around. It's a message in a bottle, isn't it? So what? Is there st there's still more? God damn it. <sighs> Alright. Back up we go. There we go. Rolo? Rolo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rolo. Mr. Kerr said that you are all right. What happened out there? Oh, man. Dang it, Rolo, where are you? <gasps> what the fuck? Who, who's there? Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. Is that Vec or something? I've got weapons in here, so you better come out right now. Strain to hear as a muffled voice began. <laughs> weapons. How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped what? Luca's throat. Who are you? What, you don't recognize me? I guess I don't even recognize myself. Oh, <gasps> it's Iggy! Oh, it's Iggy! I guess I don't even recognize myself anymore. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. It's Iggy. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. His ho it's like half his face is dead or something, right? Oh. Yeah. I'm a monster. And now they hunt me like the beast I am. Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Mm. Don't touch me! This is all your fault! Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I'm so sorry. I... I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for a second, and I get to be like this forever? There must be a way to fix this. Oh, you're gonna be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day. With his positive attitude and the power of friendship. I... None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all through Weepwood. I only came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca! Luca! Rolo? It's not safe! Luca! Rolo, where are you? The treehouse! Oh no, I'm at the treehouse! Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse is not safe! They said they were going to the treehouse! I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse! Who said they were going to the treehouse? The clipboards! Oh... What did I tell ya? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. What sort of questions? They were saying the same stuff like I always do. But it's... different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna fi figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well... Thanks. Hello? Is anyone present in this arboreal dom domicile? Oh, God. <laughs> Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here, and I'll see what they want. <gasps> oh my god! What in the fuck is this? Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh, be down in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> we have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? Is it them? Yeah, it's the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. Saying the same stuff, but with the creepy nog crinked to ten. Might young Iggy be present? We would love to hear his thoughts. Run! 
friend of you slumped to his knees. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. <laughs> Their mission control defense plane. Oh my god, really? From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward. Oh no. A warm smile on his face. Oh god. Oh god. He's so Iggy, there you are. You gave us all all of us a heck of a scare. Go away, just leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry though, we're all here to help. Help! Why are you chasing me? Luca, can you talk some sense into your pal here? Like, just look at him. He's not well. What's wrong with him? What did that gunk do to him? Oh, that's a pretty honking big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. You told me Rolo was okay, but he was back at his place resting. He is. Poor fella just got a little lost. That's a lie. That's a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why? Because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Ooh. Ooh. Why don't you pop on down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Feeling like this isn't is gonna give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? What did you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca. The, th the only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is resting, and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle, and I'm the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Oh, no. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Oh. Well, this is all that I have right now. Alright, that's all I can do. Himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. I probably would have gotten more of, like, fucked. I, uh, if I do the other branching path of Chapter 3 where Rolo is safe and sound, I'm sure I'll get other options for this one. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently Unless this is like, face of William Kerr. I don't know, we'll see. This could just be how it is. Hey, Mr. Kerr! Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. <laughs> hey! That was uncalled for, more than a little rude, and just plain unsanitary. Luca, I really did think we were good pals. What a shame that it's come to this. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. End this. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. Oh, God. Look at that one with his eyes closed next. Oh, uh, uh, he opened them again. The, the red panda. Oh, oh, no. As the clipboards began <gasps> to slowly advance on the treehouse. Oh, they're walking Luca up. Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. Oh, my God. That's escalated quickly. What? Maybe discretion was the oh better my God. part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Wow! That's so cool! Let's put a pin in this for now. That's cool. So when you hit the ending, they just are like, okay, well. What would happen if I tickled him then? Instead of pushing him. Or instead of being weird. Well, time to bust out the tickle. What if he doesn't ever even get infected? Hey, Tish, want to see something cool? Yup. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Oh, Tish, you went for Tish. Oh, is Tish gonna fall in? What the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yep. 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 Tears began to form <laughs> in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Yep, 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 yep. Beck redoubled her efforts. Until Tish finally had had enough. Is, oh no, they just went. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Hmm. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm hmm. See you around, Iggy new kid. At the puddle before <gasps> his escape. 
Oh no, 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 no! <gasps> no! No! No, 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 no! What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. No! Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best Oh, as hopefully could. it was only her hair. Is it bad? Okay. It depends on what your feelings are about having a more mature, refined look. Oh, God. Okay. Wow. Chapter 4. The Best Policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. Wait, was all of that Chapter 3? No. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. So, okay, so now the snooty guy didn't see Iggy run past. Oh, and now they're here. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Foxy and Fitz looked drained, and it was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking Aww. straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Oh, and I weren't just playing in Weep Woods yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And when we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us, and I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home, and that's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Oh, his little face. Luca, no. It's okay. Wow. I just, wow. Roxy. Still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Lolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Oh, her dad is the Tolliver guy, right? Well, weirder than normal. To the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Oh, I wish they would touch it with a stick like Beck did. Is Mr. whatever his face not showing up now? Oh, he's not showing up now. Okay. Joey, have you seen Rolo around? Uh, I've had <laughs> yeah, for beetles. Cool. Colder than normal. Oh, the Beatles. Yep, just talking about the Beatles. Cool. Mr. Muncrey jumped with a start. No, oh, Jesus! Whoa! Don't sneak up on an old fella like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh no, I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring, but the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it really. The whole thing's got a waste. Um, uh, the whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows these woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank, and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless, Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy. If there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Oh, dear. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncree. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. Uh, he's there a creep, a though. I don't really like him. Hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. 
There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. Shame? A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. No, 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 no. Don't do it, Luca. City Rolo and I. Okay, so it tells him. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. And someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage. Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Is he the yellow suit? Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Shame because he knew. He knew. It's because he knew. Because he's the goddamn. I, I, I knew the the do 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 sounded familiar. It's because he's the voice that said shit. It's him, isn't it? But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with this. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. It's a teleporting thing. It's a tubi. Shit! I fucking knew it. Yup, it was him. He's the one. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped. Oh my god! The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting. Holy shit! Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls as he braced for impact. The capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. What? He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits mm. occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He no. knows too much. No! And... Oh my Wait. god. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Wow! It was Mr. Nuncreed. When it said shame, my first thought was not like Luca, where it's like, oh, he must really feel feel like he needs to help. I thought it was, oh, it's because he knows. I, I didn't, I, I totally, like, a, as soon as that music started building up and I was listening to the do-do-do-do-do-do-do sound, I was like, oh my god, that's the exact same sound that came from this when it said shit. So... Those were only shame and fight, so what I have to do is I have to do struggle next. So I have to go through this now. Alright, meet me at the treehouse. Holy shit, this is crazy! Oh my god, okay. I have to deliver stuff. Where was it? It's... Oops, no. Wrong button. Ah, I just did it again. Press the exact same button. Circle. Uh, Nuncreen, Fratelli, and Tolliver. Cute game. It is very cute. Very good story. Kind of creepy. Big fan. Uh, are you? No. Up this way? Is this the dining place? No. I know it's a coffee shop, but just wanted to make sure. Okay, so maybe it's in the town square or the downtown area. Uh, I don't want him to see me. Is it down here, maybe? Oh, yeah, the beat store is down here, right? This guy. This one. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. <laughs> Hello? Yeep! With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. 
I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grain had some jam I'm supposed to give you. Um, also, I'm back on the timeline again where, uh, Rolo has not been kidnapped. This is where Rolo's fine. He leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. It's code. She's delivering the jam as code because it's going to the two people that she met up with on that other timeline. Ah, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me! Forward and snapped off the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves post-haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course. Of course! He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. What the fuck, man? Uh, so where do I find her shop, then? I don't want to run past... Anger from the past. Oh, shit. Makes mistakes or something. And a glimmering hope for the future. He carried all them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh, heavens. What a burden to bear. Is it... Town Hall? Beacon, beacon. Ah, I'm stuck! Help! How did I... There we go. Mr. Welder, it's just you have time to chat. Oh, it's, I forgot. Oldest of sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly, that seems to be the problem. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, that's the news of the day. There was no mention of the museum, or the foundation through which it was endowed. Sorry, Miss Valentine, my readers are more so interested in this town's future, rather than any one family in particular. Hm. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when this fam- when the goings-on of the my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is a dangerous- If you finish that thought, I will make fi I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. Holy shit. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression that this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze <gasps> and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Damn, she's scary. Oh, I can- Oh, I can go up here! Oh, that's where you were! Hey, Don. Ah. Hey, Luca, what's Dawn up? had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Huh, the guy you want jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey, Dawn, have you noticed anything weird about town lately? Sort of weird things. Stuff going on in the old Valentine building? Hmm. I might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. Still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sort of thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, I came in from Big City. His parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr and Perennial Harvest, and the other is working for Eris Valentine. Oh, that's a conflict right there. And? The Valentines represent Beacon Pines past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. Must make for an interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. Yeah, that's putting them right against each other. You, you're the one. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Miss Fratelli. Look she at you. Forward and pinched Luca's cheek. You're all skin and bones. Is your grand not feeding you? She is. She's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron taking orders. <sighs> whole situation just breaks my heart, what would happen to Eleanor. Break! I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be with you again. Take the jam! Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Yeah. Oh, yes, let's see here. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the chain. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful! She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. All right, one more. Get me out of here. 
do do do. Get out of the way. Do 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 do. One more piece of candy give. Fuck you, Mister Needle. Uh, need not not the lumble lum. Nuffleupagus. Got some jam for you, Mister Nuncreed. Nuncreed. Luca, you seem chipper. Aside from being deliver on delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in. <gasps> oh, it's because I just beat him with a tile yesterday. <laughs> I forgot. He's he's the yellow hazmat suit that caught me, tried to drag me away, and I hit him and ran off. I suppose it is. So, you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually Juniper drops it. Those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last for delivery for my day. Oh, in that case. Nancreed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your gran. Oh god. Look at him, he did the little fist pumping. Oh, back. Hey you! Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Oh. That was a much different meeting of Beck than the last one. What just happened? Well. <laughs> Screw you, Mr. Nuncreed. Oh. Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, what's your new little Beck friend's name? Eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly and this is Elona. Elona? That's a pretty name. We're Beck's parents. Oh, Beck gave you're so Luca cute. A quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. Already feels like we've known each other for years. So you can both stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh my god, her mom on the right, Ilo Ilona, is so pretty. Oh, darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want to move this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Oh god, dinner. Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. It's just... Wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get in too much trouble now. Okay, bye. Okay. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all. They can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is the little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me there. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. I'm back to square one with this whole friend grift. <laughs> Great, see you there. All right, way different timeline. Meet back at the big creepy gate. Will do. This is so much different. I wonder if it shows if the could I use the break on anything? No. Interesting. Oh, who are you? Good morning, Jeff. What's so good about it? I'll get any further down the tubes if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all that bad. Festival's coming up. Festival. Old May Valentine needs to put cock of me. Kakami shindigs all, all all the time. Kakamami? Kakamami? I don't know. And where'd that get us? It's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine Company and this new perennial harvest outfit dug through his pockets for a bit. is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. But those are both garbage. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Luca peeked up at the beehive. It's a beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Hmm, that's strange. 
Yeah, what? Okay, so there's like no bugs anywhere. Oh. Oh there, little buddy. What brings you to this neck of the woods? I was just wandering around a bit. Wandering? How wonderful. Children in their wonderful wandering. Oh, to be young. Anyways, I can't let you pass just now. Top secret business that away. Mr. Kerr winked with a wry smile. I'm just yanking your chain. Perennial Harvest is just making up a few improvements. He gave Luca an energetic thump on the shoulder. Better head home now. Our harvest awaits. That's where uh, the goop is, so... Wow, this is so... Okay, so... Wow, so... This is the, the, the choice that has completely changed it, because with the chill choice, I am alone. Or I was alone, and now I'm here. With the shit choice, I had to do this. I got in that confrontation with Iggy, and it's either Beck or Iggy that gets hit. And depending on that, it was Iggy there, and then Beck's here. And that's when I died, because of stupid Ned Crummer, whatever his name is. Anyways, that's just so cool. I love, I love these kinds of games. Probably gonna have to end this in a minute here, though. Because I need to go. Quill lives in that house. Harris and Gus Valentine, Valentine live up there. And Solomon moved in, in a few years back. Creepy little kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So that's just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens in that place all the- like that. All the time. Ugh, jeez. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Pretty much. What a waste! My mom said that he used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually, you're going to have to explain to me how all that how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Oh my god. <sighs> There you go. Most kids would have ditched me, just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. And it's cool because I actually uh, got the scoop from Dawn about her parents' job. So here goes nothing. Ooh. Chapter four. <gasps> oh. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was mm -hmm. a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Aww. He went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. Aww. She could do that. Aww. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck. Manners. It's alright. My dad passed away in the accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh, dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing, missing? Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into the dinner. Nellie nervously gestured toward the boxes. Mm. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where you said his mom was missing? Beck! I'm sorry, Luca, this move has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work? Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Ow! I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. 
We were here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. <laughs> Perennial Harvest just made her the newest lead researcher of d deep engineering. <gasps> oh, they killed the last head re lead researcher of deep engineering, right? She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is the forefront of evolving agriculture into something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to back. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nellie means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yeah, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. Some people happily leave their job and allow their loved ones to pursue their dream. You swore you didn't! Beth slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca! How about some dessert? I actually have to beat my friend Rolo soon. outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Well, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It really was good. See you at the festival, Beck. Oh, the unlucky coin. Is she gonna come? Wait up. I'll walk you home. Yep. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. Mm. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Oh. Uh, let's do rumble. To respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. How is that an important choice? Oh, because one makes the storm and one gets rid of it. I see, I see. You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? Surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break At for it. that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. <laughs> here to recalculate those odds. Hurry inside, you two, before you catch a cold. Luca, Nelly will try to reach your gran on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Radio. Oh, wow. Rolo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. A flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. Around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, shucks. Flowers! Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry, was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards, some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. Wow. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, he cared enough to keep them is all. Yeah, it's true. into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. 
Attacking the structural integrity of gum with increased amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Yuka wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. It's weird, I know. Beth looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Whoa, whoa! Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. <laughs> At least you look cool doing it. Becca took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care about what you want? Um, I didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little. Don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then what did you do? When you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I figured out on my own, though. You gotta do something. Anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe! Stop jerking me around! I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone's telling me it's gonna be alright, but things are gonna change. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate it and I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Ah! Her voice dropped to a trembling whisper. I just want to be a normal kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and there. Wow, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks. I needed that. Me too. Should head out before the rain starts out up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. See you and Rolo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Beth gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Oh, that was so cute. Five. Oh, wow. Friendly feud. Okay, I'm gonna have to leave it on chapter five, I think. I'm toyed. <laughs> but, what an absolutely adorable game. Holy moly. That's gonna have to do it for me there. I uh, gotta go. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you so much. I really like this game. It's really cute. I love these kinds of games with the branching paths. And it's like such good storytelling and then there's also like this little jump scare it's in there it's really cute i like this a lot so all right have a good night goodbye